What's up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we're going to be looking at seal of the drakes and this was requested by one of my viewers azar an um, absolute legend do just chat to him quite a bit in the old discord uh, but he's requested this so big shout out to azar and yeah so we're lucky enough to have two seal of the drakes on the account to be honest one is more than enough um she is an amazing champion great for progression um i remember when i first got her and i was probably stuck on maybe stages 18 to 19 on the normal dungeons as soon as i got silly the drakes i was clearing level 20 on every single normal dungeon and probably getting um, run times of three minutes and under so that's like how strong she is she is a hard carry and when i say normal dungeons i'm talking about dragon spider ice golem finite um but yeah such a hard carry um nightmare campaign as well if you want to clear that you can use seal of the drakes with a couple of champions like miscreated monsters a good option and they can get through most of the floors and um, i still use her in doom tower hard for every single rotation for every single floor she can just clear the waves like an absolute boss uh, but yeah such a great champion and usable in so much content so there's a few different ways you can build her um, you can go relentless which I know a lot of people like this build. I'm not a fan. Um, it's not very free to play friendly. Relentless gear is hard to come by. You have to win lots of tournaments to get it. Um, and also I'd rather put relentless gear on my Hydra champions. So, you know, Hydra is where you can get some really good rewards from. And, you know, like putting relentless gear on champions, it, it's just, you know, your best champions for Hydra in relentless gear is just going to make you do so much more. So I'd rather use it there. But it does work really nicely in her kit. Um, her A twos on a three turn cooldown. Her passive, she's just it just helps her get more heals out. Um, the heal, you know, the increased speed buff on an ally for two turns, it's okay. It's nothing too special. But again, that will help you throughout more increased speeds as well. Uh, the other way you could go is a regen set. So regen would be great on her. I mean, regen pretty great on every champion. But yeah, regen's really good on her. It just means that she has lots of survivability. Um, but my favorite, favorite build has to be a stun set. Um, stun and speed is just amazing. It's almost like it's just built for her kit. Um, so stun set's going to give you 18% chance to place a stun buff. We're going to use fearsome presence. So that bumps it up to 23% chance. Um, so let's just look through her gear quickly. So we want to be looking at speed and accuracy as our primary substats, uh, secondary HP um, uh, percentage, and then defense percentage. You can see we're trying to get as much speed and accuracy as we can. Um, HP percentage on the gloves, accuracy on the chest, speed on the boots, defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. And by the way, this is a terrible banner. Um, you, you, this is a really old build, by the way. This this build is three years old, but it still stood the test of time, and I still use it today. Like I said, on Dune Tower hard, every single wave, every single floor. Um, but yeah, so for banners, you always want banners with um subs um substats in um subs in speed. Uh, but obviously back then I didn't have any, so I had to I had to use this piece. So totals, totals, um, totals. <laughs> Total stats, Jesus, come on a real deal. Get it together. Um, total stats, we got 63k HP, 3,200 defense, 221 speed, and then 385 accuracy. So for accuracy, for the normal dungeons, you only need, um, well, at stage 20, you only need um, 200. If you're like pushing to level 25, then you'll need like 250. So, but... For Doom Tower Hard, you want a minimum of 350. And for speed, you can go two ways. You either want her the fastest on the team or the slowest. Um, if she's the fastest, she's going to open up. She'll throw out her stuns. Um, for my Doom Tower team, I've got Vizix. Um, she opens up. She locks out the enemy. Then Lydia steps in, throws out, weaken, and drop defense. And then Mithrala can cleanse or throw out Hex. And then Seer's just going to blow the enemy away and if something goes wrong or i need an extra layer of cc i've got seal to revive seer 
or I can just stun the enemy. So, you know, she just does bring a lot. And again, she's just constantly healing throughout the fight. So skills. So we've already looked at her passive. So, she, you know, she's healing at the beginning of each turn. And I'm not really a fan of this, but she just throws out a random increased speed buff on an ally for two turns. I guess what I don't like about this is it can throw things out of sync. So say you had like a clan boss team, she might ruin the tuning of it. So that's why I'm not a fan of that. But it's still it's still a pretty good passive. Um, A3 revives and it's a single target revive. And they're going to come back with 50% HP with ally protection. Ally protection is an amazing uh, buff. So say she revives my Seer. And Seer's going to be getting hit quite a bit. Seal of the Drakes is going to soak all of that up. She can just eat that damage for days and it's not going to do anything. So just su such an, a good ability. And it's only on a four turn cooldown as well. Her A2, which is probably the best bit of her kit. She throws out an AOE stun. It's a double hitter. And each hit, when fully booked, has a 35% chance of placing stun B buff for one turn. Um, and then we're also got fierce and presence. So that 35% chance goes up to 40% chance. And we've got the stun set on as well. So, um, you know, that's another good chance to land stun. So the chances of her, there's five champions in front of you. In general, she's probably going to stun at least four of them. Just such an amazing kit. And again, on a three turn cooldown, she can just, you know, you'll cycle through this very, very quickly. Um, A1, attacks one enemy, has a 20% chance of placing the big boy version of decreased speed for two turns. Also has a 30% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 15%. So it's 50% um, chance when fully booked for the turn meter, and then a 40% chance of placing that decreased speed. Um, this decreased speed could be like useful for bosses. Um, I use it on Griffin. Um, actually, yeah, Cinder Drakes is in my Griffin team as well for Doom Tower boss. So you can use her for that as well. Um, but yeah, it's just useful for loads and loads of content. But also as well, being able to push back turn meter, you know, can be useful for Spider. Um, it can also be useful for Fire Knight as well. So a lot of use out of that A1. But yeah, as you can see, like just such a god tier kit, so much going on and just provides so much value for so much content. So blessings. Um, so I would go Polymorph if I was struggling in Doom Tower. So say you're struggling with some of the waves. This is just going to give you an extra layer of CC. And people always think of Sheep for Arena. But again, you can use it for PvE content as well if you need to. Brimstone having to be one of my favorite blessings. Um, for PvE, you just do so much damage. And it really does bring a lot to the table. Um, but say you've already got two champions with Brimstone, then I would probably take something else. So if I was going to take something else other than Polymorph, it'd probably be Cruelty. So Cruelty, whenever this champion hits an enemy, decreases their defense till the end of the turn. And it just means that the rest of your team can just do more damage and it'll just help you go through waves faster. So Cruelty, Polymorph or Brimstone would be the way that I'd go. And then Masteries. So she's got really, really specific masteries. So we're in the defense tree and support tree. Uh, we're going to take blast proof. This is going to reduce AOE damage that we receive. Uh, Resurgence, one of my favorite masteries. Um, so if we take a big hit, there's a good chance that we can remove a random debuff from ourselves. Um, delay death, it just uh, makes us a little bit more tanky over time. Cycle Revenge, again, if we take a big hit, it means that we can boost our turn meter. And then Fearsome Presence, we've got the stun set. We've got the A2 that stuns as well. You need Fearsome Presence for this build. So we're taking extra HP in the support tree. Lay on Hands is going to increase our healing. Uh, healing Savior, so um, it basically increases the healing that we do if the target's um, HP is under 40% as well. And again, it's just stacking up that healing and she's constantly doing it throughout the fight. Uh, Cycle of Magic again, this is just to help us um, reduce cooldowns on the A3 and the A2. Um, Sniper, you know, it just helps us have a better chance of landing our um, slow on the A1. So really, really good to have that. Um, again, Master Hex as well. So if we do land slow, we can keep it out for longer. 
it's not going to increase um, the stun duration. That would be broken. Um, yeah, then we've got yeah this. That's just so we can go into here so we can get more accuracy. And then Evil Eye so we can just push back, turn me even further. And it's actually really nice. It does give you an extra layer of control uh, on waves. So, you know, you've sort of done everything you need to do. And you can just A1 and just keep pushing them back. Uh, keep pushing back their turn meter. So we've looked for a kit, gone through gear and skill. Let's um let's have a look at her in Spider, and I'll just will show you an old school team that I used to use. I I can't even remember what I used to use, but uh, I'll try and build something, and just so we can showcase see the Drakes in action. So in my opinion, Spider's probably the hardest normal dungeon where well, it was for me anyway at this stage. So let's just roll with it and see what happens. I've done no presets here. It's just full auto. So we've got Deacon in here for drop defense and also for pushing back turn meter and turn meter boost for us. Miss Cray Monster, obviously a god for this. Look at how fat those shields are. He's amazing for this. And I've purposely not brought in a HP burn champion just so that we've got Seal of the Drakes helping um, just provide CC, doing some revives. Um, then we've got Cold Heart, obviously god tier for this with heart seeker doing insane amount of damage pushing back turn meter and then we've got royal guard in here just doing uh enemy max hp damage on the boss and then it's just all about sort of surviving you know we've got the boss halfway through now we've managed to land a slow that could have been from seal or from uh, royal guard but yeah now it's just basically surviving going back through cycling back through their abilities and then just killing the enemy team and there we go again look at that she's stunned probably what 80 percent of the spiderlings absolutely god tier and yeah this is a pretty good runtime considering you know i purposely tried to build a team so we can showcase see other drakes um saying that though maybe i shouldn't have brought in miss Crane monster obviously being god tier for this but i feel like I've not seen this created monster used in such a long time. Um, you know, I think it's just like HP burns, probably the best way to go for spider. That's a pretty good run. One minute and 24 seconds. Not bad at all. Let's, let's do a doom tower run as well. Why not? So I thought I'd mix things up a little bit. Um, I've gone for triple DPS, one drop defense, and then we just got seal and we're going against the hardest floor on 90 for, um, for the Griffin. And this is on rotation two. And I've done this on purpose. So I could definitely bring in some ally protection champions, but I don't want to do that. I really want you to see Seal sort of shine here and just watch her get to work. Because if I brought in other champions, she's not really doing as much as she can. She's not really getting the showcase she deserves. So we're just sort of casually going through the enemy. Oh yeah, and who, who who's on the team? Um, Hepfrak, my favorite nuka, or, or yeah, he's probably my favorite nuka. He's an amazing arena nuka. Uh, Royal Guard, Seal, Lydia, and then Rotos. So Rotos is an absolute boss for this boss. Um, basically, he throws out his A2, does loads of damage, um, gives himself more HP, meaning he does more damage over time. And he smacks really hard with his A3 as well. Uh, Lydia for that drop defense and weaken. Um, Hepfrak just to help clear waves and do some insane damage. And then we've got Royal Guard, who's just going to, you know, hit really hard with his A2, doing that enemy max HP damage. So, yeah, I, could, I mean, the other thing I could have really done with here is brought in a cleanser like Doom Priest, because um, we are going to be getting a lot of debuffs on us and it'd be nice to sort of cleanse them. Uh, with the Griffin as well, you need to try and kill him fast. So that's why I've gone for triple DPS. Over time, he starts to do more and more damage. Uh, throughout the whole fight, he's constantly just stealing buffs from us uh, and also transferring debuffs from him to us, which isn't very, very nice. But you can see Seal is healing up a very, very squishy team. I mean, Royal Guard has pretty, what's, I can't quite see, maybe 70%. HP, but she's still keeping him alive. And um, we're getting through this pretty comfortably, to be fair. And oh no, Royal Guard's gone down. Don't worry, guys. He's back up, and Silla Drakes is going to keep him up. 
And we're almost there, guys. There we go. And Scylla the Drakes has solo carried this with healing. 334,000 all by her lonesome. I mean, that's pretty hard carrying. Um, then we got Rotos and Hepfrak doing pretty much the same damage. And then Royal Guard lacking a little bit behind. But yeah, I hope this video helps anyone out there that's just got Scylla the Drakes. You definitely want to go with that stun set. Um, but yeah, if you guys could leave me a cheeky thumbs up, make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.